Hi everyone and welcome back to the Diabetic Debrief. No interview today, I'm just going to go on a quick overview of everything that's new in type 1 diabetes tech and different cures that are coming about and also the laws that decide who can actually access them. So let's start with sensors. Continuous glucose monitors are now the default for type 1 diabetes care. A big headline last year was that over-the-counter CGMs, Dexcom Stellos, and Abbott's Libre Rio um, could be bought without a prescription. Those are aimed at adults who are not using insulin, but the big, bigger signal is cultural. Glucose data is no longer a niche thing. That momentum helps us normalize CGM access for people with type 1 diabetes too. Coverage matters. Medicaid expanded CGM eligibility so that anyone on insulin could qualify, and some folks not on insulin can qualify for documented hypoglycemia. That's been huge for older folks with type 1 diabetes. Medicaid is still patchwork, though. Most states cover CGMs in some form, but criteria and device choice vary a lot, creating inequities for people with type 1 diabetes who rely on Medicaid. The ADA and the CHCS have been pushing really hard to make some change on this. On the pump slash automation side, the AID, which stands for Automated Insulin Delivery, news is something that you'll actually feel in your everyday life. First, the Medtronic 780G now works with the new Simplera Sync sensor. It was approved in April of 2025. Fewer parts means a much simpler life. Second, the Omnipod 5 finally rolled out Dexcom G7 and iPhone support for all US users this summer. I use the Omnipod 5, so that has been a great relief for me. Tandem is iterating too, Mobi Hardware and the Control IQ family. Uh, 2025 brought Control IQ and clearance for type 2, which isn't type 1, but it shows regulators trust these algorithms more broadly, which tends to lift coverage and clinic comfort for type 1 diabetics as well. The islet bionic pancreas keeps growing as well. Its whole thing is less micromanagement for users with type 1 diabetes, but it also is a bigger risk if you want less control. Bottom line, tech is great, but access and onboarding are the magic. The ADA's 2025 standards underscore matching de devices to the person, not the other way around, and building education into the plan. The second thing that we want to talk about in today's episode is the cures and the fine print. Quick refresher, t can delay the onset of stage 3 type 1 diabetes for people with stage 2. It's not a cure and it's not for everybody, but delaying clinical type 1 diabetes can buy families real time to plan and kind of process the news. The big restore insulin story is stem cell derived isolates. Vertex's lab grown isolates had peer reviewed phase results published in the NEJM this year. Some participants are actually producing their own insulin. However, the encapsulated version, which, stands, which is VX264, didn't nearly meet any milestones and it was actually stopped reminding us that this path is real, but also rocky. And the current approach still involves immunosuppression, which limits who will qualify and also makes life a lot harder for the people who are taking this medication. For an equity lens, who gets into these trials and later who actually qualifies for this therapy really does matter. The FDA laid out diversity action plan guidance in 2024 to push for more representative enrollment, though that guidance became politically contested in early 2025. The translation simply is, watch this space and keep insisting on very inclusive trials. The third thing that we want to discuss is the different laws that are shaping your day-to-day -day life and how you may access insulin or different diabetes tools that you may use. In terms of insulin affordability using Medicare, the Inflation Reduction Act cap in caps insulin at $35 a month in Medicare Part D, and it extends protections under Part B, which is a really big deal for many adults with long-standing type 1 diabetes. In terms of state laws, roughly half of the states in the U.S. now cap insulin copays in state-regulated plans. Remember, these caps don't usually reach state self-insured employer plans, so results may vary. California also recently capped long-acting insulin pens at $11. For PBM reform, states and the FTC are scrutinizing pharmacy benefit managers over insulin pricing and formulary practices. This isn't just politics, it really does affect whether your plan covers your CGM or your insulin that your clinician recommends that you use. In terms of school rights and kids with type 1 diabetes, under Section 504 of the ADA, students with type 1 diabetes are entitled to accommodations. Think a 504 plan aligned with their diabetes medical management plan. If you got a kid in school, or if you are a kid in school, this is your legal backbone. Even if you don't think that you have any rights, please look into this. For Medicaid kids, 
Children on Medicaid have special federal protection called EPSDT. If something is medically necessary, states must cover it. Yes, that can include diabetes technology. This is really powerful leverage for families seeking CGM supplies and education tools. In terms of research funding, the Federal Special Diabetes Program, or the STP, which is the engine funding much of our type 1 diabetes research, lapsed on September 30th, 2025. Reauthorization bills are in, but they have not been passed yet. If you care about the cures, please stay up to date on this matter. Now we're going to talk about different ways that you can plug in and get involved today. One is fight for funding. Tell Congress to renew the SDP. Call your senators and your representatives and text your friends to do it. Another option is joining a trial or a registry if that's something you're interested in. Ask your endocrinologist to, about different studies or AID trials. And if you're from a community that's underrepresented in research, your participation could really change that science. The last thing you can do is volunteer and advocate. You can work with Breakthrough T1D, which is formerly the JDRF, and push for SDP renewal, tech access, and equity. You can mentor families and even speak at events like I have. You can work with the American Diabetes Association as well. You can use their policy tools slash kits on CGM access, insulin affordability, and state advocacy since it really does vary a lot depending on what state you live in. Finally, we are always happy to have more people on our team and we invite you to work with us. If you want to work the diabetic debrief, please reach out to us, sign up to work with us or join our team and our link will be posted below. Thank you so much for watching or listening and we will see you soon. Please check out our website, which is the diabeticdebrief.com. Thank you.